How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics. Welcome to tutorial number 8 in this video series where I show you how to get a leap motion motion sensor to interact with a Raspberry Pi. In the last tutorial we started making our class that's going to sit on the Raspberry Pi. We made all the skeleton methods, now it's time to code them. So our constructor method is done, that was the only line we had to do, so we did it in the last tutorial. Now let's do this go online method which returns a server socket. So first thing we're going to do is create a new server socket called server socket and we're going to set it equal to null at first next thing we're going to do is a try catch block so try server socket equals new server socket and we're going to pass in as a parameter our server port which is of course is this constant up here so we're going to pass in server port alright now what we're going to do is our catch so uh, catch io exception e so basically if we do end up with an error all we're going to do is we're going to show a, a J option panel saying that we you know can't create this network connection so for that J option pane dot show uh, show message dialog and as the parameters we're going to pass in null comma server so this is a message from our server is what we're saying comma oops sorry not comma yet we gotta say uh, error creating network connection and then Uh, comma a string that contains error comma j option pane dot error underscore message oops all right o and an r should be capitalized as well so that's going to be our j option panel that pops up if there's an error trying to make the connection. That's our entire catch part of the block. Now um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to print out so system dot out dot print line uh, server online put a backslash n which is an escape character just to drop down to the next line and we're gonna say waiting for gestures on put a colon one thing I forgot to do is surround this thing with quotation marks so waiting for gestures on and then what we're going to do is print out the local host so inet address dot get local oops local host plus another colon and then we're going to add the server port Alright, server underscore port. Alright, and finally, I just want an extra line there just to make it look better. So an extra line of spacing before we start printing out all the gesture information. So that's going to be our try. We're trying to print all that out. We're going to catch here. So catch exception E. 
and then we're going to return our server socket instead of null. So return server socket. Let's just see what time we're at. Oh, we're fine for time. Only five minutes in. All right. So that is our go online method. Next, what we're going to do is start our read input one. So we're going to do a while loop. So whenever this method calls, it's going to keep looping as long as our program is running. So to do that, we're just going to pass in as our uh, condition true. So keep looping. It's basically saying infinitely loop until the program stops. So while true, we're going to create a new socket called socket and set it equal to null. We're then going to create a buffered reader buffered reader called in so this is going to be our input stream which is going to read from the uh, leap motion computers output stream which was the print writer so buffered reader in equals null next thing we're going to do is a try block again so try catch block uh, try socket equals server socket dot accept next in so our buffered reader equals new buffered reader and we're going to pass in new input stream reader which it is going to take as a parameter the socket dot get input stream all right finish that off with a semicolon so yes a long line to create our buffered reader but we're going to get an input stream reader which is going to take as its parameter the input stream of our socket so that is our try portion of the block now we're going to catch I O exceptions so I O exception E and in that case we're just going to display and we're going to display a J option panel no I'm going to copy this one just to save a ton of time okay now just want to look what I have the message here as so okay so we're just going to change this here where it says server. We're going to change the error to error connecting to client. And that's the only change we have to make for that. All right. And then finally, we're going to finish off this catch by exiting. So system dot exit pass in negative one. So that's going to end our program if we cannot connect to the client. So there is our, nope, we still got a little bit more, sorry. That's not the end of our read input method yet. We still got a little bit more to go. So now we're going to get into reading the stuff that's been sent from the Leap Motion computer. So we had to do another try. So what we're going to do is we're going to try string request. So we're going to this string is basically going to be the message we get from the leap motion computer. So request is equal to in dot read line. Now, one. Now we're just going to determine what kind of request we're getting from that computer. So if request dot starts with Uh, just uh, put an open uh, string with uh, open bracket in it. So what we're saying here is if it's an open bracket, well then it's just an updated position. Uh, because update position sends um, coordinates inside those brackets. So we'll know we're just updating the position. So now we got to go about dividing this string to get the coordinates. So this is where all the fun happens. So string sub str which stands for substring we're going to set this equal to request 
dot substring. Now we're going to pass in one because we don't need that bracket here. So we're going to start at the second index. So one comma. Let me just go to the next page of my notes. And then the end position is going to be request dot length minus one. So we want it to be one less so that way we don't get the closing bracket. So that's going to be our substring. Now what we're going to do is create a string array. So string coord inets equals sub str dot split uh -huh. and we're going to split it at every comma. Why are we doing that? So we get just the coordinates back. So why do we have an error here? Oh, sorry. We got to put the open close square brackets there just to make it a string array. Alright, now next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our screen size. So dimension screen and we're going to set this equal to java dot awt dot tool kit dot get default toolkit dot get screen size so that's our dimension we got our screen size now now next thing we gotta do is determine our x and y positions to move the cursor to well we have these coordinates up here and now we have the screen size position so float x position equals float dot parse float so we're gonna create take our strings up here string numbers and turn them into a floats all right parse or sorry uh, so float dot parse float and we're gonna pass in coordinates at zero so coord in nets and then inside square bracket zero is the position so that's gonna be our x value and then next is going to be our y position which is the exact same thing okay we just gotta change it to y position and we gotta make it index one that's our y position now the leap motion does have a z position as well but we're gonna ignore that because we don't need that we don't have a 3d screen so now that we know the position x and y position we are going to move the cursor. For that, we're going to do robot dot mouse move. For our X position, we are going to typecast. So int we it, the robot takes an integer uh, for the mouse move method. So we got to typecast it to an integer. Now, before we do that, we have to make our X and Y positions proportional to our screen. That's why we got the dimension up here for our screen. So screen dot width times our x position and that's all there is to it for our x position. Really simple. For our y position it's a little bit harder. So once again we have to typecast it to an integer but first we have to take our screen dot height and we are going to take away the y position and then uh, multiply screen height so multiply screen height uh, screen dot height so that's how we get the y position so now our mouse has been moved all right, so uh, that is the end of moving our mouse. That's all I'm going to leave it at this time. Next time, we'll go over uh, clicking, scrolling up, scrolling down, and then our swipe as well. So thank you guys for watching. Remember to comment on this video, like this video, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.